Today we will show you how the evaporative emissions control system works on your car. Now the EVAP system is basically a mandated emission system that prevents any harmful gasoline vapors from entering the air. Now the most visible element of the EVAP system is the gas cap and the filler neck, but most of the system actually resides underneath the vehicle, so let's take a closer look at what's going on underneath. So here we are underneath the vehicle where the drive shaft would sit. We have two sides of the gas tank underneath the shield here and over here and if you follow these lines back over here you'll see that this thick line here goes out to the fender which is your fuel filler we've also got these smaller lines here that go from the gas tank to the evap canister underneath this plastic cover so I'm gonna go ahead and remove all of these hoses and drop the gas tank down so we can have a closer look at the evap system so here's a closer look at the evap canister with the cover removed we've got some electrical connectors as well as some vacuum lines that go into there and the big charcoal canister on top of the evap canister there's this piece here which actually goes into the frame itself. Now holding the gas tank on is this strap here that has a large bolt that goes into the body. Now inside the vehicle you'll notice that it has two fuel pumps, one on the left side and one on the right side and this is the one here that has the fuel line that we need to disconnect. Of course fuel is going to spill everywhere when you disconnect it. Now underneath the hood here we have this vacuum switching valve. So here we have the entire EVAP system removed from the vehicle so we can have a closer look. Some of the major components include obviously the gas tank and its associated fuel pump and fuel lines. We have the purge valve which is underneath the hood. We've also got the fuel filler neck with its associated vent lines. A couple of vacuum hoses that lead over to the charcoal canister. So here we have an overview of the EVAP system in this vehicle starting with the gasoline tank. Inside of there we have the fuel level sensors as well as the temperature sensors. We've also got this recovery valve here that prevents any liquid gasoline from flowing through this line over here into the evap canister. We've got the evap canister which is of course filled with activated charcoal and acts like a filter. Then we have this other line here that purges any gasoline vapors out to the air intake of the vehicle and it's controlled by this purge solenoid. Now the pressure sensor is located on the same line as the purge line over here and the computer can use that to diagnose if there's any leaks in this entire system. Finally we have the vent control valve here which will vent the evap canister to the atmosphere. Now let's face it the whole reason why we have an evap system is because gasoline loves to evaporate and turn into harmful smog. That's the reason why we have a closed fuel tank and in fact the entire system is closed starting with the fuel filler neck over here going over to the fuel lines themselves all of the vacuum lines going over here and the charcoal canister. So now we're going to take a closer look at what some of these lines do here starting with the fuel filler neck which comes down into the tank over here. It's got a small little line for ventilation. Now also at the back of the tank we have the evap line that purges harmful gasoline vapors into the charcoal canister to be refined and then we have the purge line here which goes all the way to the front of the vehicle and that basically takes any harmful gasoline vapors that has already gone through the charcoal canister and goes through this vacuum switching valve which purges it into the air intake manifold to be reburned by the engine. Now the charcoal canister itself is not too big or heavy and it's basically filled with activated charcoal which acts like a holding tank for any harmful gasoline vapor that come in here during normal operation until the ECU clicks the switch here on the engine and decides it's time to reburn that vapor. It also acts like a filter from all the gasoline vapors that come through this line here when you're refueling your tank. Now the entire system here is governed by the OBD2 protocol and it uses readings from the pressure switches as well as the vacuum switching valves to make sure that there's no leaks in the system and no harmful gases are vented into the air. Otherwise, it'll throw a check engine light. Of course, safety first, I'm going to drain the fuel tank before I open up anything. Now this fuel tank has been removed from a rear wheel drive vehicle, which means we have a hump for the drive shaft down the middle. We've got one sending unit on this side and a pump and a sending unit on this side over here. We've got a couple of 8mm bolts to remove. And then I can pull up the fuel pump assembly. And then pull up the sending unit itself. Now since this tank has two sides, it's actually got this extra hose here where it sucks gasoline from the other side. So I'm just going to disconnect that right now. I'm going to play it safe and pump out some of that gasoline that's still stuck in there. Well I've got about 3 liters of gasoline out of this tank that was already empty from the fuel pump. So you've got a lot of gas left even though the fuel pump can't actually pump it. And of course I'm just going to reuse this gasoline into another car. So here we have the bare fuel tank. It's basically just a stamped steel clamshell that's welded all the way around its perimeter. To get a really close look inside, we're going to need to cut this open to see how all the baffles work as well as the valving behind all of these hose ports. And of course I'm going to play it safe by filling up this tank with water so it doesn't explode on me from the gasoline vapors when I'm going to cut it open. Now what's interesting is the other side fills up first before this side. 
because the fuel level itself has to level off and go over this bump before transferring over to this side. So I'm just going to make an incision with my angle grinder along this area here. So if I lift up the whole thing here, you can see we have all those baffles in here. So with the gas tank cut in half, we can take a closer look at what's inside, including all of the valving at the top of the tank. All right, now we're gonna pour out the gas tank from all the water. All in all, this tank holds about 76 liters of fuel. Here we have the fuel tank baffles and it basically prevents the fuel from sloshing around as the vehicle accelerates and decelerates, but it still allows the fuel to level itself off in the tank with these holes that are punched into this thin steel. So here we have the fill check valve. We've got two hoses that come up into this one hose here and this goes over to the charcoal canister. Well, this small little tube here connects to the filler neck and that basically vents this when it's being refueled. And in its current position, it's actually at the same level as where the fill check valve would be. All right, I'm just gonna disconnect the hoses here so you can see what's inside. So here's the fill check valve assembly and you'll notice that this here, which is the float, is actually sitting lower than this valve over here. Now if I remove this in the bracket, let's pop that open. And then if we just pop this top part open, we have a very long slinky like spring and inside of here we have the float. So how this works is we have this float that's buoyant inside of the gasoline and there's a rubber seat at the top here and it's spring loaded at the bottom. Now because this whole valve system is situated near the top of the tank, when this float here rises it'll actually seal off against that surface inside of there preventing any gasoline liquid from going into the charcoal canister potentially harming it. So now if we take a closer look inside of this valve, it's got a similar float like device, but this one is more for vapor. As you're refueling your gas tank, a lot of vapor is going to be building up inside of the tank. And if the pressure gets too high to a point where this is going to activate and it's going to lock off any venting to the charcoal canister through these hoses over here. And that's basically going to trigger the gasoline pump to shut off and stop pumping fuel. Now this here is the fuel filler neck where it joins to the gas tank. And we have this little one way valve here that allows fuel to go in when it's being refueled. Now this closes when it's not being refueled through spring pressure and that kind of prevents any spills when the vehicle rolls over in any incidents. Now when the tank is getting refueled there's a lot of pressure being built up in here from the liquid and the gas and when that pressure hits the maximum at the switches it's basically going to let fuel fill up inside of the filler neck itself all the way up to the pump triggering it to shut off. Now here we have the charcoal canister and it's got a couple of electrical connections here including this pressure switch which connects to the purge line that goes out to the engine to purge any excess fuel vapors. Now the pressure transducer has a linear scale with voltage when 5 volts is initially applied to it around atmospheric pressure. When vacuum is applied, the voltage drops. We've also got the line that comes from the gasoline tank. And finally, this one vents out to the atmosphere. Now one test the ECU can use to check the system for leaks is to open up the purge valve here to draw a vacuum on the entire system and then close it and also close off the vent valve and use the pressure sensor to monitor any drops in pressure throughout this entire vacuum system. Now if there's any drops in any pressures due to like a small hose leak or something, it'll throw a code for a small leak. Now if there's any major leaks such as this hose is completely disconnected or you're missing a fuel cap, then it'll throw a large leak code. Finally, it can relieve any pressure in the system by de-energizing the vent control valve and monitoring the pressure to make sure this valve is operating properly. If I apply 12 volts here, you can hear that it clicks. And if I do that while blowing air into it, you can hear that it basically allows the air flow when I turn it on and off, so it works like an air switch. Now the EVAP system also uses the purge valve to go the other way and purge any excess fuel vapor inside of the charcoal canister back into the engine to be reburned. Now of course it'll adjust any ignition timing for the richer fuel mixture and it needs to do that through a couple of drive cycles to make sure all the monitors are functioning correctly so you can pass an emissions test. Now here we have the vent solenoid and it's basically a switch that's controlled by the ECU for on off to allow the charcoal canister to vent itself. It vents over to this tube here which has a water vapor collector and an air exit tube with a mini filter. You see what's inside this vapor catcher over here? It's basically just a chamber to catch vapor. Now we're going to open up this vent valve to see what's inside and how it works. 
Now essentially what happens inside of here is we got a little solenoid. You can see all the coils that go around this metal core. And when you energize it, it causes the plunger inside to move in or out. So here's a cross section of the vent valve, which is normally open, which allows air to vent from the EVAP canister out to the atmosphere. Now this spring is pushing the plunger this way normally, but when you energize these two coils over here, the plunger itself moves back this way and blocks any access for air that moves from the canister to the water separator and the atmosphere. Sphere. The main problems on these EVAP systems are the solenoids themselves that misfunction or the vent valve here gets plugged up and that kind of prevents gasoline from being refueled and your pump keeps clicking off because the air vapor cannot escape out through this vent valve. And that's very common that insects tend to build nests in these vacuum lines. Now I'm going to chop this open to see what's inside. I'll wreck this top off here. There we go. Another spring inside of there. And we have two compartments. This one, smaller one, goes to the vent line, and the other two goes from the purge line and the gas tank line. Pry this guy open here, and that reveals this filter-like material. And if we take that out, you can see we have the charcoal. Now the charcoal itself is activated, and that helps absorb any of the harmful gasoline vapors that pass through this charcoal canister. Now the lid here actually has a very tiny pass through over here. So essentially what happens is the gasoline vapors actually have to come in through here and then go out to the top and then come back around this way like a circuit in order to fully process all of the gasoline vapors before it exits out the vent valve to the atmosphere. And the charcoal itself is also kept compacted for maximum efficiency and surface area exposure to these springs here and this filter. Now let's just see how much charcoal is inside this part of the canister. That's a lot of charcoal. You could probably do a barbecue or something with that. Now we have the small side of the charcoal canister. It's also got a paper filter. And it's got more charcoal inside. It kind of smells like gasoline. It's going to empty that out. Looking down inside the charcoal canister, there is a paper filter that blocks each of the three ports. Now the charcoal itself is in tiny little bits and pieces, again to maximize surface area. It kind of looks like rat crap. But next up we have the fuel filler neck and the gas cap itself. Now the cap itself is actually a safety device. It holds pressure normally when the system checks are being conducted. But if there's too much pressure in the whole gas tank system, it's going to vent out some extra pressure to prevent an explosion. Now the gas cap itself has this little o-ring that goes around the outside. So inside of here we have one spring that controls this plate and that basically gives it that press and turn feature that you get on these caps to lock them onto the filler neck over here. So here we have the fuel filler itself. It's basically a receiver for the nozzle from the gas station's fuel pump. And it's got this extra fuel line on it just to vent things from the top of the tank. Now when the tank is filled, this entire thing will fill up to here. And inside of the fuel pump itself, there's a trigger that when fuel enters the nozzle, it knows that the tank is full and it'll get clicked off right at the top here. And it looks like inside of here we have the pressure release valve. So essentially what this does is the first spring will hold the pressure of the gasoline tank up to a certain amount of course and then when it gets to a dangerous level this thicker spring will compress and that will move these plates out of the way allowing any extra fuel vapor to seep through the gas cap itself. See, this washer here is actually made of a rubber and that's what butts up against there to keep the pressure from pushing through. And the last part of the system is the fuel pump, the sending unit and the temperature sensor which I'm going to detail in another video. And that's pretty much how the fuel and evaporative systems work on your car. Look at all these components that go into making your car safe to drive on the road. Make sure you subscribe if you want to see more videos just like this one.